Welcome to the Library Kitchen. I'm Tom, and I came here today to make three sandwiches for you. I'm going to begin with a Lebanon bologna and Swiss cheese sandwich. I'm going to follow with a tuna fish salad sandwich, and my last sandwich will be a chicken salad sandwich. So, with no further ado, I'm going to begin with the Lebanon bologna, which requires me to get bread out to begin with. And since uh, I'm uh, living in a, uh, a home with no children, there's two of us, I'm going to make two sandwiches, because that's what I do every time when I make this. You can make this on any bread you want. I prefer it most on white bread in particular. And it is so simple to put together. It is merely smearing some mayonnaise, the mayonnaise of your choice, whatever you enjoy the most. So as I go, I like to spread my mayonnaise on both sides. It doesn't have to be a particularly heavy coating. We're not really trying to uh, saturate the bread or anything. The next thing, plain old yellow mustard, just a little bit. Doesn't need a ton. And I'm going to spread that out as well. And once we've got a nice yellow spot, and you can put as much or as little as you like. I personally like one piece of Lebanon bologna out of the package and one piece of Swiss cheese out of that package. And we, again, use a locally sourced Swiss cheese that has these lovely child-proof containers that old fingers can't get a handle on. Oh, look, I'm feeling younger every moment as I fool with this. It's just great. And when we're done, flop it over, and you've got a pair of Lebanon bologna sandwiches, which I like sliced in half. I'm going to make some tuna fish salad, something that everyone makes. Everyone makes it differently, too. And at the end of the day, if you like tuna fish salad, it's all good. And I like tuna fish salad, too. But uh, over time, I've gotten a lot more picky. So this is actually solid yellowfin tuna in extra virgin olive oil from a very well-known national brand, which is also very highly regarded. Now, a lot of people like to really smush down on their lid when they clear the oil out. The oil is, we buy this specifically because it has olive oil in it. And as such, it's a really yummy um, tuna fish. So we can cut back a little bit on the other ingredients. So one can, again, usually makes two sandwiches for Nancy and me. And it takes just a few minutes to prepare. So we get the tuna fish in there, let it break up. So, in tuna fish salad, you can do all manner of things. You can make it sweet, you can make it savory, you can make it tart. Today, I haven't really figured out. I'm, I'm kind of up in the air on so many things. Here, I'm going to move that over there. I'm going to put some dill in it today, because I really like dill. And dill's fairly simple to deal with. You don't need a ton and a half load. It's just nice to have a lot of fresh dill around. So, all I'm going to do is just, and just take some of that dill, that's probably enough, we don't need a ton ton. And next, we're going to jump into adding some crunch to it. So I happen to like celery in it. Celery is a great amendment for tuna fish. And unless you have the rare European allergy to it, it is excellent. I also like onion, but onion tends to bite me. So I take onion now and throw it in a microwave at a low power setting for a couple of minutes to blanch it really. And it helps sweeten the onion and it takes some of the sting out of it if your stomach is dicey. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put a little bit of onion in it. Doesn't need a ton. Next thing we jump on again is our favorite, the mayonnaise. Need a clean spoon, I only brought one, so let's see. That should be adequate to the task. We need salt and pepper. I have a pepper mill, so fresh ground, it's yummy. And a little bit of salt. 
Now, if you wanted to make it sweet, uh, pickle relish goes really nicely. Sweet pickle relish will go into it really nicely, but today we chose not to. We want to make it a little savory, so I'm going to add an unusual seasoning. It's a Middle Eastern seasoning. It's called sumac, and it is a cross between salt and lemon itself, and it really is a wonderful amendment. Don't go crazy with it because you can ruin a dish as you can with any seasoning putting too much in, but the sumac in the right proportions will elevate this and give a depth of flavor that you don't usually get. So here we go, just a bit. And you can see when you look inside, it's a very red seasoning. So I probably dropped in maybe a half a teaspoon in with a can of tuna fish to give you an idea of how much. The final thing I like in it, and I like mustard in a lot of things, but is a little, about a teaspoon and a half of Dijon mustard. There we go. And then it's time to make it into a mash or a salad or whatever else you want to call it. Now I know on a lot of these other presentations, everyone's got a family recipe. My mother hated tuna fish. She never made it. My wife fortunately likes tuna fish, so I got brought into the 21st century, in the 20th century for that matter. Okay, so the next thing I always do, just make sure. Mmm, that's good. I'm going to put more pepper in it. And a little bit more sumac. Because the, uh, the concept of putting more salt in it is bad. Too much sodium, when there are other things that can accomplish the same task, is not a good thing. So here we go. Let's just taste it one more time. Mm. Oh, that's a nice tart one. I think you'll like it. Now, unlike my friend who used to run a sandwich shop, I don't have an ice cream scoop to make this look really official. There we go. And in you go. Let's see. Waste not, want not. Well, put that over here. Spread it out evenly. I hate sandwiches that don't have it on the corners, as it were. There we go. But I also don't like sandwiches that are so overfull you take a body bite and half of it ends up on your blouse. Not a fun proposition at the end of the day. So, hopefully everyone will enjoy that. And then we move on to the final sandwich which in some respects is the most complicated. You can use any chicken you want. You can go to canned chicken, you can bake a chicken, you can fry a chicken and peel it. The point is you're just using the chicken, not the skin, not any, any, any other part of it. For this particular recipe, I poached a pair of chicken breasts in a, a cup and a half of broth uh, that was cut approximately 30% with water. I like to make broth too. I make my own stock. And I add about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of limoncello. And I also put in a bouquet garni of um, lemon thyme and uh, Thai basil or holy basil. And then I poach it for approximately 20 minutes. I bring the temperature of the chicken up to 170 degrees. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Bob's your uncle, as it were. So, with no further ado, the first thing I like to do is to dice the chicken, quite literally. And I like my chicken more than diced, obviously. So, but a dice is a dice is a dice at the end of the day. For some rather light chicken breasts, so we might get three sandwiches out of these. All right, we'll take it and put it into the bowl. Now it's time to season this. So, let's see, we are going to begin with the tarragon. Now tarragon is a seasoning that doesn't appeal to everybody, so it is wise to either know your audience or not be too profligate with its use. Put in a modest amount. 
Now this happens to be about three cups of diced chicken, which I'm going to mash up with this tarragon in it. So I'm going to put about a teaspoon at the most, maybe more like half a teaspoon. I don't want to overdo it because it is a very dominant flavor. I am going to use sumac again just because I happen to personally love it. And it's a wonderful thing. It beats excessive salt use with a stick. And then the salt, the pepper. Pepper goes in everything in our house, but that may not be your taste. And Dijon mustard for this, but this one gets about, a, oh, two teaspoons in it. One, two. Okay. And we also need some lemon juice in this. And I like fresh lemon juice just because real lemon is awful stuff, in my opinion, but to each their own. Let's see, I want that side. And I got this great lemon squeezer that actually holds out all the seeds. It was another Amazon purchase. It's an excellent thing. So that is approximately, uh, what, two or three teaspoons, maybe, no, about two teaspoons of lemon juice in there also. So if you're counting, then that you've got what you need. So what I want to do is take the chicken and mash it. This is how you get it into salad form. And if you've taken the time to poach it to the just right space where it's not overdone, because it'll just fall apart and make these nasty dry shreds, to the part where it's not underdone and it won't give up the ghost as it were, and you have to actually mince it with a knife, which is not the same. Think, think pulled pork too. Who likes pulled pork? where you get these little itty bitty bits in because someone had to take a knife and chop it. No, you want it cooked for 10 or 11 or 12 hours so it actually pulls apart in those wonderful long strings. And the reason I don't put the mayonnaise in right away is I want to get a head start on it. Oh, so we got a lot. So we're gonna need at least two or three teaspoon, tablespoons of mayonnaise in here just to lubricate this. Here we go. Stir, stir, stir. See now, as I stir, it does tend to break up into the longer fibers and you get just what we're looking for, something actually very similar to the texture of the tuna fish salad. So we're gonna put a little bit more onion in this too. I like onion, but not too much. A little bit of celery, just a little bit and parsley. This is fresh parsley and it's a medium dice. I really recommend fresh parsley as opposed to um, dried parsley. The intensity of flavor is better in this. We're not cooking it, so we really want it to be fresh and bright. Well, this is gonna make more than two sandwiches, definitely. Unless I sample a lot of it to make sure it tastes well. That's possible. It's always possible with me. All righty. And it's really just a matter of stirring it until the chicken lets go. Now, to make really good salads, if you're in a hurry, this works. But if you have time, it's much better to put it in the refrigerator and let it sit for a while and let the flavors develop in the cold. I forgot, there is a secret ingredient that goes in here too. Someone just reminded me of it. I've forgotten all about it. So this is Major Gray's chutney. So this is a personal preference for me. So it's on the, the grocery store shelf. I don't remember where because my wife Nancy finds it all the time, not me. And you don't need a ton of it. It is sweet. It is yummy. Is that, nope, that's the one I want to use. And we are going to pull, because we've got so much, probably, oh, there's a big, it is a true chutney. And chutney is uh, an Indian term for a thick sauce because these are typically cooked. It's like a jelly or a jam. This, in this case, it's a, more of a jelly than a jam. But at the end of the day, it's a sauce because it isn't set hard. The other thing is that because the major grays is so sweet, and it is an important condiment when you add it 
to be aware of how sweet it is. But if it's too sweet, all you have to do is add some salt or sumac or lemon. All of those things will balance the super sweet out so it meets your expectation of the right flavor. You don't have to live with uh, too sweet if you make a mistake. Everything's always adjustable in cooking. You just have to be patient. Come on. I was watching this guy earlier today take down a tree. Back in the day, I used to take trees down. Uh, so I'm fascinated by the new techniques because it's been <laughs> 40 years since I took, climbed a tree to take it down. In fact, I don't go high anymore at all. So, he was trying to take down this really nasty octopus tree, as he called it, and he used uh, a lot of rigging to do it. And in the process, they actually had to lift the limbs up, which is very unusual in the tree business. Usually you cut them off and you lower them down over and over and over again. But they had to lift them up to get it over parts of the tree. So he's going crank, 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 crank. It's kind of like stir, 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 stir. Spread, 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 spread. It was amusing. Here we go. Let's see. And I like a slice of lettuce on it. We're going to denude them again. Open up. Here we go. And need some lettuce. So this is pre-washed for your personal safety and mine too. Here we go. That adds the nice ultimate finish to it. That one's the smaller one. And I love this leaf lettuce because it cleans so easily. Mr. Salad Spinner gets all the crud out of it. But it's generally a really nice product anyhow. There we go. Okay, so those are really special, I have to say. I'm only going to cut them in half, though, because they are so special. <laughs> that and they'll fall apart on the plate if I do more. Can't have that. Nope, stay put. You know, this knife is so sharp, I've actually shaved my fingernail accidentally with it. But sharp knives, what a difference it makes to your world. Yes. All right, I was afraid of this. The platter's just not gonna be big enough. So we'll have to stack. Oh, come on, there you go, guys. Well, some of the tuna fish is gonna have to be excavated. How's that? So that's it, three sandwiches. They're my recipes, they're everybody's recipes. It's how you make them. But sandwiches are so much fun in the summer. I really love them. And when you get to the end of a long day and you really want something that's satisfying, but you don't want to make a huge meal, this is it. The other thing is, this kind of salad, when you make too much, you just pack it up, cover it up, put it in the refrigerator, it'll keep for two or three days. But then again, you have the Lebanon sweet bologna, that keeps forever. Well, figuratively speaking. Thanks for so much for having me in, and I hope you enjoy these, and look forward to seeing you next time in the library kitchen.